gastric lesion by using a master and slave transluminal endoscopic robot, a survival study, and this will be presented by Dr. Rajat Gul. Uh, thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm going to present on ESD, which is endoscopic submucosal dissection of gastric lesion by using our master robot, which is a master and slave transluminal endoscopic robot in terms of survival study uh, on behalf of Department of Surgery, National University Health System, Singapore. Uh, nothing to disclose. Yeah, for, as an introduction, ESD was first performed in Japan. They did it for end block curative resections of early gastric cancers. Uh, currently, we use standard endoscopes and instruments. They have limited degrees of freedom. It is technically demanding and prone to complications. We got our concept from the chili crab, uh, which has two arms. One is the grasping arm, and another is the monopole diathermy hook, which we translated into our robot, which has nine degrees of freedom. Initially, we did a feasibility study on pigs with our master robot. Uh, we, did, we selected five Erlangen porcine models and five live pigs, and we compared the performance of EST in live pigs with the standard IT diathermic knife. Uh, we did three lesions on each five Erlangen model, one on cardia, interim, and body. We found there was no difference in dissection at times at the various locations. Comparing the performance of master robot with the conventional endoscopic IT knife, uh, the mean surgical time, excision, and block, and mean dimension was similar. There was no excessive bleeding or perforation. But uh, going onto the learning curve, the master had a learning curve and uh, soon it took, uh, it took over from the IT knife. This time we combined feasibility with the safety, whereby we did this, uh, the end block resection on five live pigs, uh, which were followed up for two weeks, and then a necropsy was done on them to assess the safety. The study design was, uh, uh, as already explained, the five female pigs who went EST, Initially, at the time of surgery, we measured any completeness of res resection, time of resection, and introp complications. The pig were followed for two weeks. At the end of two weeks, a gastroscope was done, followed by a necropsy, whereby we checked for any intraperitoneal contamination or perforation, and the lesion was explanted. The uh, stomach was opened to the greater curvature, and the lesion was sent for pathological examination. Uh, this is our uh, study design. Uh, coming to the surgical video, this is the surgical team where it needs an endoscopist and a surgeon. The surgeon controls the master robot and the endoscopist controls the slave manipulators. Initially, through the normal endoscope, we use a, a marking knife to mark a circumferential lesion. After marking of the knife, we inject some mucosal injection of methylene blue dye, which is diluted with 40 ml of normal saline to elevate the lesion. After this, we use an IT diathermic knife to make a circumferential cut. Again, the lesion is elevated with the submucosal injection of the methylene blue dye. After this, the robotic manipulators are inserted, which are mounted on the forward wing endoscope over the over tube. The advantage of this robotic uh, uh, master robot is the triangulation. As we can see, the surgeon controls the two arms, and the endoscopist controls the slave manipulator. One arm is the grasping arm, the other arm is the monopolar diathermic hook. So it helps in the triangulation, so dissection, retraction can be done under vision to prevent any complications. And if there is any complication which happened in a third pick, it can be dealt easily at the, at the, at the same time. This is the picture at the end of the uh, endoscopic submucosal dissection, just to check for any perforation, any bleeding. The size measurement. Uh, uh, this is our operative data. We operated five, five pigs. Uh, there was no, uh, there was one pig, third pig had a small perforation, which was located on the body. The lesion ranged from 2.5 cm to 10 cm. Uh, at the end of two weeks, all the pigs survived. Uh, the gastroscope showed normal healing even in the pig which had a small perforation. The, uh, there was no intra-abdominal infection or any adhesions at the end, at the necropsy. 
There was some free fluid which was sent for uh, microbiological examination which showed no growth. And the stomach was explanted, sent for histopathological examination which showed uh, normal healing. This is the gastroscopic picture at the en end of procedure and the end of two weeks we can compare the healing size. This is the gross picture of the explanted stomach specimen in the microscopic picture. Uh, to conclude, EST with master is feasible. It is also safe with a short learning curve. Even though we had a perforation in a third pig, which was safely dealt and the pig survived two weeks, is a novel procedure, is a promising robotic platform. From endoluminal, we can go to transluminal procedures. The future, we are already done a transluminal study on pigs for resection of liver models, which already we have already published in surgical endoscopy. The robot needs few improvements, like it needs a haptics technology. Uh, it needs swappable end effectors. And we are planning to do the first human master EST in NUH at the end of this month, which has already been approved by IRB. Uh, thank you. Any questions from the floor? That, that's just phenomenal technology. It's very fascinating to watch uh, watch the arms work. What is the what is the what is the uh, mechanical actuator there? Is there is this a, a motor controlled or is there physical? Are there cables that go down? How, yeah. how does it work? Uh, the the two arms are connected by the electrical cables. They go through the standard endoscope uh, through the two working channels, which are connected to the telemonitoring surgical system and indirectly controlled with the endoscope and directly controlled by the surgeon which goes to the master robot. So it's the surgeon who directly controls the two operating arms and the endoscopist controls the endoscope. So the action is independent of each other. But they need coordination, that's why there is a learning curve. Once they know they got how to coordinate, it's very easy to perform. Very nice. Yeah, this could really be an enabling technology to get endoscopic, you know, resections to the, to the masses. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you.